All right, Scorpio Nefucus, welcome to your yearly 2019 Sidereal Astrology forecast. All right, so this year there's going to be an emphasis on two key areas for you. One is going to be on your first house where you've got Jupiter. So really good year for accessing Jupiter energy, which is about expanding your horizons, accessing that adventurous side, and also listening to that spirit for life. And this is going to really uh, continue to help you cultivate a greater relationship with yourself, you may say. Cultivate your independence, your assertive side, your direct side, which is really going to be uh, emphasized here uh, this year. So along with this, um, your second house has Saturn, Pluto, and the south node. So likely a lot of things being built with your inner and outer resources. Really good to take this area slowly and steadily this year, like taking patiently your uh, material security, building that area, uh, building your sense of self-worth, self-reliance, and uh, maybe releasing some fears or some patterns associated with the area that can be very freeing and transformative for you. So along with this, Uranus is going to be shifting into Aries here around April, which is your sixth house. So you'll likely notice that April onward, uh, you may want to incorporate some changes with your day-to-day -day routine. Maybe it's with your work, maybe with your health. Just uh, mixing up the area and trying different things with it can be quite exciting, especially when it's about discovering your true self when it comes to your work and routine. All right, so let's take a look at all of this here in more detail when we return. All right, Scorpio and Fucus, here is your chart for the year. Now, we are using the outer planets, as you can see here. Um, this is going to give us a good general look at the uh, year without convoluting it too much. If you do want to look at the fast movers like the sun and moon and all those, do check out the daily videos that I do um, as we go through the year. Now, if you're new to the channel, you'll also notice that the constellations are different sizes. This is because we are using what's called true sidereal astrology, also could be called using the actual sky. So um, if you are new, definitely check out the link down below for more information because this does change the signs from mainstream astrology. And you also want to make sure you're watching this video for your sidereal signs. So uh, there's a birth chart, birth chart calculator down there. You can uh, check that to see if you do in fact have your sun, moon, or ascendant in Scorpio or a Fucus. All right, so let's go and take a look at this year. Let's start with January because there is a lot starting in January and really sets the mood for the rest of the year. Um, one is going to be the eclipses. So we have a solar eclipse January 5th, and this is going to be in that second house of your inner and outer resources. And it's going to be involving that south node. So really good time right at the beginning of the year to sit with the energies. Um, see if there are any patterns really associated with your self-reliance that you can become aware of or maybe some patterns involving the material realm or these types of things. So um, this sort of inner awareness that will have this ability to do, to have greater inner awareness, can really help us see some things that we may want to release. And so you may decide, maybe through this internal releasing, that some of you might be releasing some past patterns, so maybe concerns or thinking patterns and such that are kind of causing these karmic cycles we're creating these cycles regarding your self-reliance, maybe regarding the material realm or material values in some sense. And this releasing that you'll be doing can be very freeing for you and very liberating throughout the year. And I think this really sets the stage here at the beginning of the year here. Now, January 21st, we do have a lunar eclipse, and this is going to be in your ninth house. So this is really finalizing what's been taking place for about the past year involving if you've been learning new things regarding your adventurous side um, or new things regarding philosophy or spirituality or higher wisdom stuff or higher learning, um, anything on that level, uh, really good to finalize. Uh, I think there'll be some sort of completion with it um, here at the end of January and just good to do a status check with it and, and finalize anything involving that stuff. And that's mainly because the North Node's going to leave Cancer and go into Gemini here at the very beginning of April. And so around April, there's likely going to be a shift where there might be some experiences for you to learn more about the deeper dimensions, which is already inherent in your nature anyways, but in your life, right? So maybe exploring deeper your own psychology, 
your own um, deeper self, uh, shadow work, um, breaking cycles and patterns, facing fears, empowering yourself through, again, breaking patterns and cycles, which is very much what the eighth house is about. And also learning you know, more about your deeper values in life, whatever those might be. And when we get to July, that's going to be the solar eclipse in that eighth house. So there could literally be some new beginnings for you here involving this area where you could be uh, maybe learning some you know, new deeper things about yourself or about life, getting vulnerable with yourself. Also in relationships, really good to learn and explore that sort of interdependent side of life and build trust in your relationships, both in terms of you know, relying on others a bit. Um, but also just emotionally as well, building deeper connections there. So really good to explore all this and excellent month in July in particular, July 2nd, to set some new intentions with that during the solar eclipse there. Now, when we get to the end of July, July 16th, we do have a lunar eclipse, which will be in this second house. So if there was anything that started earlier in the year in January, involving this sort of new work or new releasing you were doing with the inner and outer resources, or inner and outer resourcefulness. This is likely the completion of it in that sense. Now again, it's gonna be ongoing. So with whatever the completion is, you'll probably gain some insight about also some things you're releasing again with it, or new things more than likely you're releasing with it, which is then gonna help you continue to develop the area moving forward for the next six months for the rest of the year, July onward. And so great time, mid-July, to do a status check with the area. How is, how is the resource sector going? Maybe do some more releasing with any self-limitations with it being so close to Saturn and maybe releasing some fears and again, releasing patterns that could be very, very um, freeing for you and liberating for you as you move forward July onward. All right. Now, since we do have eclipse seasons in the sort of January, December time, uh, we do have the uh, season technically starting at the very end of this year on December 26th. So the very end of the year, the end of December, we're going to have a solar eclipse, and this is going to be in that second house. And what this will likely feel like is maybe a newfound sense of spirit or newfound sense of inspiration regarding this material life stuff or your resources and maybe some new opportunities there, in fact, because in November leading up to that, these last couple months of the year, Jupiter goes into the second, giving you a bit of inspiration regarding your income, regarding your self-reliance, regarding your material life. And so it'll be an excellent time these last couple months and going into 2020 to sort of uh, really expand your worldview. And that'll be a big contrast to what's the more serious limiting energy with it, with Saturn here. And, you know, I'd say all year, it's, you know, all of 2019, it's good to take that slow and steady approach to building your inner and outer resources. Um, but these last couple months of the year, um, you get the Jupiter side, which is total opposite, which is more about expansion. And so you have a nice, healthy balance between the grounded and the more fiery aspects of inspiration regarding that sector. All right, so those are the eclipses. I wanted to talk about all the eclipses, so we were staying on point there. But let's go back to January, because January is when we do have uh, the two aspects that we have for the year, starting in January, and we'll feel them for most of 2019. So one is going to be Jupiter squaring up to Neptune. And the other is going to be Saturn sextiling up to Neptune. So both involving Neptune this year. And so it's probably going to place an emphasis on this planet. And for you, it's in the fourth house. So for about the past 10 years, if you felt a bit like maybe uncertain regarding home life or health related things, or your life has been sort of requiring you to go more with the flow involving the area and surrender what's outside of your control with it. And on the same token if you've had dreams or ideals regarding home or family or health or anything like this it's an excellent year for building those dreams and ideals for doing the work with them because that's what the square with jupiter can really help integrate that's also what saturn supports as well but with the integration with jupiter it's it's this kind of year of again up until november of expanding your horizons about life and that jupiterian energy and inspiring yourself and learning more about yourself and cultivating more of that independence and doing things that require confidence and courage and being more of your true self really magnifying all that and so as you do all that that can be very constructive to your home life and personal life all right and sort of see how you can integrate your personal goals and personal needs with your emotional needs and emotional life and home life and things like that. And then it becomes very, very constructive.
and vice versa. As you develop and ground those dreams and ideals constructively in the present moment regarding your home or health, that also directly supports you in terms of this expansion you're doing. Because we do need roots in life to have expansion and we do need to be connected to our feelings to really know who we are, what we want, where we're headed. So an excellent year for setting intentions on that level. Now the Saturn side of it is just a bit of an opening and this is as you do that work with that self-reliance and your res resources in life that can also directly support your home life and also vice versa. Again, these grounding of your, you probably know it's a bit of, again, concretizing and solidification, relatively speaking, involving your home and health this year. At least there's an opening for that. So as you do that, that can also help support this um, development you're doing with your resource sector. All right, so the last thing that's important to talk about for the year is that Uranus is going into Aries. You know, Uranus is a very slow moving planet. This doesn't happen very often when he changes sign. He's been in Pisces the past 10 years. And so this has been your fifth house. You know, if, if you found that the past 10 years, there's been unique and different ways of expressing yourself, or if you've been uh, revolutionizing your self-expression, or if you've had different passions and excitements and things, anything on the level that has to do with either things you're passionate about or your self-expression, it's finalizing here around April more than likely. And where Uranus is going is in your sixth house of your work and routine, suggesting that it'll be a great time for the next five years, roughly, to mix that area up. Try new things with your work, your routine, your health, your diet, and um, see how those can be changed. How can your work and routine be changed to bring in more freedom into your life and be a greater reflection of your true self? But it'll likely require you thinking outside the box and really you know, flipping the area upside down, looking at it from different angles, being um, scientific with it, which is what Uranus is all about, to really help revolutionize the area. All right, so Scorpion of Fucus, that is the year in a nutshell. Hope you found the video helpful. Um, down in the uh, down below, but also on the page, there's a 20% discount for the uh, personal readings if you do want a personal look at the year ahead. But thank you so much for all of your support with this channel, for liking, commenting, and sharing these videos. And um, I'll see you all next time for the daily forecast. Take care.